Hi, I'm Mara Webster with In Creative Company, and I'm so thrilled to be joined by today's guest, Annalise Judge, to talk all about the second season of Netflix's Sweet Magnolias. And I actually wanted to start by talking about Drew Matthews, who is your acting coach, and the way that you ended up kind of stepping into this industry and into this craft. And, and it sounds like he's also someone that you've worked with extensively, you know, even since the beginning. Um, and so I was just interested in hearing a little bit more about that kind of first work that you did together and kind of like forming and figuring out yourself as an actor. Um, and how Drew has kind of continued to be a resource even at this point coming into the second season of a show for you. Absolutely. Um, Drew has been my mentor for about seven years now. Um, gosh, I may even be closer to eight. Um, so I've known him for a very long time. He is a phenomenal actor, but also a phenomenal person. And um, I actually just saw him last night. He and I um, co-taught a um, acting workshop together last night. So He's continued to be someone that I turn to for any and everything. And um, yeah, he's just phenomenal. I'm so glad you asked. Um, <laughs> so when I first booked Sweet Magnolias, I guess to rewind a little bit, he taped that audition for me and he helped me to kind of pull everything I could, the greatest tactics, the greatest moments, um, everything he knew I was capable of. He was really helpful in drawing all of that out for this audition. It was one of my first auditions of the year. Um, so that was a really great experience and something I'm not going to forget. And he's taped all of my auditions since, um, at least most of them. Gosh, I'm trying to even think about how to how to chronologically tell that story because he's been such an influential person in my life. I started taking acting classes with Drew when I was about 13 years old, maybe a little closer to 14. And I immediately knew that acting was what I wanted to do for the rest of my life because of the way that he was able to explain how powerful it can be and demonstrate that in front of the camera. Um, and how he was able to draw such great things out of all of us as kids, um, things that we have been told by society to push down. You know, he encouraged us to break all of those rules of don't talk unless you raise your hand and don't just blurt things out. And even the craziest reactions you could have to something somebody says to you, it's OK to do that here. It's OK to do that in front of the camera. You don't have to be society's version of the best person when you're an actor in front of the camera, um, of course. And he really encouraged us to break out of the box. And um, that's something that I've carried into my personal life is being unapologetically myself and um, following my impulses, trusting my gut. And I think that applies in a lot of areas of life. And I'm really grateful for the lessons that he taught me. That's amazing. And I, I love that you were saying at the beginning that you had the chance to, you've been able to co-teach as well. Um, and what's what's that experience been like for you kind of reaching a point where you're kind of on the other side of it now and you're imparting things that you've learned through your experiences with other actors and, and what have been some of the things that you've really wanted to try and share and impart on them? Um, it's been an incredible experience getting to work um, with Drew and other coaches at the studio um, and getting to share the craft that I love so much um, and that I've grown to know so much about. And um, I think my favorite part of that is that I feel like I learn just as much from the kids that I'm coaching. Um, I don't ever coach anyone my own age or older. It's always middle or high school age. And um, just seeing them break out of their box and seeing so much of myself in these young aspiring actors and working actors even who train at our studio. Um, it's really incredible being able to see them blossom and getting to learn more about them as individuals. Um, it's just great. It really is. Um, and I feel like I have really learned from this experience how to articulate the things that I see because your body is your instrument in acting and you have to be able to use the entire instrument. I actually explained this to my younger brother who's also an actor. Um, I explained this to him last night that when you're listening to a song, you'll know if something is wrong, if an instrument is out of tune and you may not know what it is, but you can tell that it's off. And it's our job as coaches to help you fine tune those instruments so everything works in harmony, everything is balanced and your instrument comes together 
and just portrays everything that you so vulnerably and authentically want to share with the world. I think that's so wonderful. And, um, you know, you were you were touching upon the initial self tape that you did for Sweet Magnolias and then obviously went into the callback stage and wanted to ask you about that stage where once you've gone in for the callback, that kind of waiting to hear back and because it sounds like you had such a strong affinity for this character and, and for this project and really felt like, you know, that was the path that you needed to be going on as an actor. Um, and I know you've talked about kind of like manifestations and meditation being kind of like a really key component and was interested in just hearing a bit about how you kind of approach that stage of, of waiting to hear back on things and trying to have some semblance of, of control with things because everything's so far out of your control as an actor at that point, you know, you've gone into the room, you've done the work that you're going to do and it's all dependent on other people at that stage, but it's still kind of sitting with you at that point, obviously. Absolutely. Um, I've definitely, especially over the past year, surrendered to the fact that I can't control so much. Um, I think I used to really want to control things and I would let that spiral me down this path of why didn't I book this role? What about me isn't good enough to play this role? What am I missing? And I've really learned that sometimes it has absolutely nothing to do with you. It could be your height by half an inch or it could be the way you said this one line, somebody said it better. And that is just, it just means it's not meant for you. But I truly believe that the things that are will not pass you by. There's just no way that they could. Um, and just thinking about Annie and Sweet Magnolias, I really think about even down to the character name and now reflecting on having booked this role and everything that I've learned from it, all the people that I've met, it was all exactly how it was supposed to happen. And there's these little marks from my angels that I can see in this character where I'm like, yeah, that was absolutely meant for me. And if I had gotten this role earlier in life or later, it just wouldn't have been as perfect as it was. And I think that just trusting that everything that's meant to be yours won't pass by and is destined to be yours if you're willing to put in the work and have the support system with you and help, not help and allow them to help you. I think that there's no way that you can't be successful in this industry or any anywhere. Yeah. And with that kind of serendipity with the connection to this character as well for you, you know, this is a character that you've been able to really bring a lot of yourself to as well and, and kind of naturally just understanding from your own experience of like growing up in kind of a very tight knit close community in the South as well. You know, that's obviously a huge component of the show and, and impacts Annie in so many ways. You know, she lives in this very close community. She has a relationship with everyone around her that she's known since childhood. Um, there's that idea of kind of like everybody around me knows what's going on in my life as well and so there's all these kind of fine details that that kind of influence how you play her on the show and so how is that different to any of, of the other work that you've done in terms of, of shaping this character and figuring out who she was when there were so many aspects that you already knew about her um i'd hate to say that it was easier to be able to put so much of myself into this character. I think if anything that made it a lot harder because I was really putting so much of myself into it. Whereas with other characters, it's someone completely new that I've created and that I just take on while in front of the camera. But with Annie, there are so many different pieces that are from myself that it's almost more vulnerable and more authentic and it's a lot harder to give so much of myself to everybody because when they say, oh, why did she do that? It's like, well, I, I probably would have done that too. Um, <laughs> so it's almost like judging the character, it's also judging me. And I had to be willing to put myself out there as this character. And in coming back to make the second season of the show, was there kind of e an even further level of, of connectivity and intimacy that you felt with her as a character? Um, you know, because at the beginning you had such a sense of who she was already, but you hadn't yet played her. And then you've had so many episodes and so many scenarios and situations. And, and it's also that thing of working with the rest of the cast and the things that you discover once you're playing alongside of them. And so did that evolve the relationship with the character that you've had even further? Absolutely. Um, I feel like season one was a really big learning experience for me. And um, I was only 17 when I 
first did season one and now I'm 20. So something that I like to think is that with the second season, Annie is growing just as much as I did over the past two years. Um, so that's been, that's something that I'd say was really different was that it was more from a reflective standpoint rather than a jumping in and learning everything all at once. Yeah. And I, of course, wanted to talk about working with Brooke Elliott on the show, who plays your mom, because the two of you have really kind of found that very, very genuine complexity that comes with a mother daughter relationship, particularly when it's been just the two of them so much of this time together as well. Um, and, and wanted to ask about the way in which the two of you always kind of continue to work with one another, not just to capture that closeness, but also, you know, when there's conflict between them, what does that conflict look like, you know, and allowing that to be very real just as much as, as the intimacy and connection between between the two of them? Sure. Um, I think that this season, especially Brooke and I grew incredibly close. Um, season one, we were really just getting to know each other. And by the end, we were developing that friendship. But we talk every week, even after we wrapped. Um, and we're very close. And I think because of that growth that we experienced in our friendship, I was really able to trust her fully to to allow me the space to act authentically and just genuinely in the moment, um, which is what you hope for with every scene is that you feel safe enough to be as vulnerable as necessary, which is sometimes a lot. And so I think that especially in moments of conflict, scenes of conflict that we've had, and even scenes of just great joy, trust and because of that safe space that we've created as friends that's really helped to allow us to just feel the things that we feel in the moment and live authentically um and just rock those scenes together that's really amazing and and you know kind of jumping back to the point that we were talking about before with this being a very close-knit community and the fact that you know when your character walks down the street, when she goes to church, you know, she's always in a room and always walking past people that she already knows. What's that experience been like in getting to play a character where you get to have all of those different interactions with kind of almost pretty much everybody on the cast at this point, it feels like. For sure. I think that it's been really exciting, um, especially to read everybody else's storylines. Um, Annie doesn't necessarily always know what's going on in other people's lives, but somehow she's always intertwined. Um, and I think that that's been a really cool experience because that is exactly how it's like in a small town. Everybody kind of knows what's going on and somehow or other you're going to be affected by something your neighbor did or something that your friend's mom does or something like that. Somehow you always end up feeling something for them, even if it's just because you're close to them and you care so much for them. And I think that that's really an interesting thing. Yeah. And you've also gotten the chance to work with, with a really great handful of directors on the show at this point. And have there been any particular moments that stand out in terms of the collaboration that you have with the different directors where they've really kind of helped you to figure out a certain moment for Annie or figure out certain dynamics of a scene alongside some of the other cast? I think that Norman Buckley, who's also an executive producer on the show, he's really helped me to break out of my shell and really just embrace everything that Annie is. And he's always so encouraging um, for what he knows that I'm capable of. He's during the call, he actually looked at me and the table he was sitting next to after I performed my scene for the second time. And I just think from the start, he's really believed in me and put so much trust into me to pay respects to this role and do it justice for everything that it is. Um, and so just every scene, even if he wasn't the director, he was always there to watch and to provide a listening ear and someone you can bounce ideas off of. And I really just appreciate him for everything that he is. 
It's really wonderful. And, you know, one of the other things about playing a character like Annie is that you're getting to play her at, at this really beautiful stage in life where she's really figuring out her voice and who she is. And she's at that crossroads of being very connected to where she lives. And at the same time, kind of having that feeling of, of being ready for something else and being ready for that next step and kind of wanting to break out of it a little bit. Um, and so particularly going into season two, what did you kind of think the, the main arc of that journey for her was in terms of her figuring out her voice as a young woman? I think that Annie learns a lot of lessons in season two, um, for sure. Just like last season, you know, she has to try new things in order to realize if it's for her or not for her. And I think that she really realizes this season that there's a lot more beauty to Serenity than she first gave the town credit for. And I think that she really finds home there and understands that home doesn't always have to be a place, but it can be the people surrounding you and making you comfortable and safe and loved. And I think that's something that she really realized this season. Though, on the other hand, I do feel like having big dreams and living in a small place, those big dreams don't ever really go away. So if the writer's room ever wanted to explore those the chasing of those dreams, then I'd be all in for that too. Yeah. I also love that we get to kind of see all of her different passions and, and creative outlets and interests as well. And, you know, especially when it comes to something like photography. And so given that the particularly her affinity for photography is such a consistent thing throughout the show, you know, even if it's just the fact that she has a camera in her hand at, at a particular moment, it's because she's always looking at the world in that way. Um, and so what did that really tell you about the character or help you tap into early on with her? Well, so we definitely still see Annie's camera this season. Um, we see the world through her camera yet again, um, which I think is just a fascinating take um, to see the world from. And I think that having her camera and photographing these things and in the beginning having taken photos of all of these ugly things and the ugliest parts of Serenity, I think that that's just her rebellion and that's the way that she chooses to express all the things she's feeling inside about her parents separation and i think as we explore just every arc to this story we see how her art transforms in different ways and how she chooses to express those feelings and obviously it, it wouldn't be Sweet Magnolias and it wouldn't be the show without there being elements of conflict between characters at certain moments. Um, and obviously the second season is very much kind of with Annie in particular, like the fallout and the interpersonal dynamics because of the car crash at the end of season one. Um, and, and I think it's really interesting to watch a character and figure out who they are in those moments, whether it's conflict that she has with her mom or whether it's with Tyler and Kyle, um, you know, particularly because Annie seems to internalize a lot for herself and it's not about having an argument with someone, it's about getting very quiet. Um, and so what aspects do you enjoy playing or finding within her within those moments of conflict and really thinking about what that's gonna draw from her? Um, I think, like you said, it's finding her voice. And while she does have the tendency to bottle everything up, I feel like she starts to explore really finding an outlet in other people and giving herself the permission to be open and vulnerable to being hurt um, by sharing her feelings with others. And I think that this season, I was really happy to see that she was able to do that, at least in some ways. Of course, it doesn't happen all at once but it was really nice to have those more vulnerable conversations where we really see her for more than maybe her teenage angst. We see that hurt and that anger and that embarrassment or that frustration that lies underneath. And with the relationship that you have with her as, as a character at, at this point, what are the things that you feel that you're still getting to continue to learn about her as a character or just in general learning from working on the show still? I think that I learned something new every day that I set foot on set. Um, it was incredible also because she had a lot more freedom to just come to set and watch other scenes as well. And learning from so many talented actors was 
just such a cool experience being able to observe and draw different things and see why I liked a certain scene and why I liked it and what made it just so unique and so special. And then being able to apply that to my own character. That was a really cool experience. Um, and I just feel like from Annie, I've also learned that it's okay to be open with your growth and it's okay to be open about the things you're feeling and to find your voice and share that. I feel like I found my own voice through her and her journey to find hers. And um, that was that was really special to me. Uh, really appreciate all of that. And, and thank you so much for, for your time and congratulations on a great second season of the show, Annalise. Thank you so much.